hey guys a very good day to you all so in this video we will do what are metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors so first of all we all know the basic definition and the difference between conductors and non conductors so conductors are the ones who allows the flow of electricity and uh, since they allow the flow of electricity they are good conductors of electricity and non conductors which are also known as insulators they do not allow the flow of electricity and hence they are they are bad conductors of electricity now these conductors are basically classified into two types ones which are metallic conductors which are also known as electronic conductors and the second type is electrolytic conductors which are also known as ionic conductors so we will first start with the first type that is the metallic conductors or electronic conductors now in the metallic conductors or the electronic conductors what happens is that we take a metal and we pass a electricity through it as we all know metals are good conductor of electricity so it will allow the flow of electricity through it but how does the electricity actually flow through the metals the electricity flows through the metals due to the free electrons now what are these free electrons as we all know in each and every metal in the last cell of or uh, in the last cell of every metal there are one or two electrons these one or two electrons which are in the last cell are loosely bound to the metal and since they are loosely bound to the metal they can be easily detached from the metals so these are those free electrons which are shown by yellow color spot so these metals are free to move in the metal metal itself and this when the, a metal loses the electrons it becomes deficient of electrons and thus it is denoted by positive charge therefore this orange over here is nothing but your metal this metals which are positively charged is also known as kernels now the flow of electricity takes place due to free of electrons that is the electrons when uh, connected to a battery they move through the conductor a metallic conductor and this allows the flow of electricity to the metallic conductors there is no flow of matter that is these metals never flow through the matter they stay at their constant place only these free electrons will move metallic conduction in, is inversely proportional to temperature which means if uh, we increase the temperature then metallic conduction will decrease and if we decrease the temperature then metallic conduction will increase now first let's understand why metallic conduction is going to decrease when we increase the temperature when we increase the temperature what is going to happen is that this metal will gain energy so when this metal will gain energy it will start to vibrate within the metal the, these metal ions will start vibrating so when this metal ions start vibrating there will be a obstruction to the flow of this free electrons so this free electrons will not be able to move freely and it will get hit with the positively charged metal ions which will start vibrating when we increase the temperature at normal temperature these metal ions do not vibrate they are in their place only but as we increase go on increasing the temperature at high temperatures this metal ions start vibrating and as they vibrate they collide with the free electrons and thus restricting the flow of this free electrons and see they uh, these metallic conductors or which are also as electronic conductors they obey ohms law so we are done with the first type of conductors moving ahead with the second type of conductors the second type of conductor is nothing but known as electrolytic conductors or ionic conductors we have done the process of electrolysis in the last couple of videos so over there as we all know we first consider a electrolyte and when we connect a battery through this to this electrodes what will happen is that one uh, the positive terminal of the battery is connected to one electrode and a negative terminal is connected to one another electrode so the electrode to which the positive terminal is connected becomes positively charged and the electrode to which the negative terminal is connected of the battery will become negatively charged as there is a potential difference in the solution because of this positively charged anode and negatively charged cathode what will happen is that this electrolyte which is 
a molecule made up of a positive and negative ions for example nacl how nacl is formed it nacl is formed due to the bonding of na plus and cl minus ions so when there is a potential difference in this electrolyte this na nacl will again get dissociated into na plus and cl minus so since opposite charges attract each other this positively charged na plus will get attracted towards negatively charged cathode and these positively charged Na's plus ions are known as cations and negatively charged ions are known as anions they will get attracted towards the positively charged anode so as there is a dissociation of ions taking place the flow of electricity in metallic uh, sorry in electrolytic conductors or ionic conductors is due to the decomposition of electrolyte De the electrolyte is getting decomposed decomposed into positive and negative ions now there is flow of matter means there is a flow of ions which is positively charged and negatively charged previously this uh wait a second guys previously in uh, metallic conductors this positive metal ions were not moving they are they are still they are standing in their own position the only the free electrons are moving therefore there is no flow of matter that is a, a matter mean main ions main atoms are not moving only its electrons are moving over here the atoms itself are moving for example na plus is moving cl minus is moving therefore there is flow of matter that is there is flow of ions it requires to be in either liquid or solid uh, sorry either liquid or gaseous state over here there is a mistake this is not solid it is gaseous why it requires to be in the uh, liquid state or gaseous state is that because this electrolyte gets disso dissociated and it requires to move to the cathode and anode respectively so in order to move freely it should be in either liquid state or gaseous state because if it is in a solid state then they cannot move because in solids all the atoms are closely packed and they are very close to each other the electrical conductors over here is directly proportional to each uh, to temperature means if we increase the temperature the electrical conductance is going to increase and if we decrease the temperature the electrical conductance is going to decrease this is because if we increase the temperature then the electrolyte will automatically get uh, dissociated into positive and negative ions instead of, means they will get dissociated because of the positive and negative terminal potential difference but they will also get dissociated due to temperature so there as there is increase in dissociation though so more number of ions will get dissociated at the cathode and anode and due to this there will be more conduction of electricity so they obey ohm's law also so guys this was all about the electrolytic conductors or your metallic conductors so we have here, here we complete the fifth module of the electrochemistry chapter stay tuned for more videos on electrochemistry and also your 11th and 12th physics chemistry as well as engineering physics chemistry guys do like and subscribe to the channel